What's going on, y'all? Ray know what it is. It's your boy, most wanted here, you know, on episode 13 of Breaking Bread. The, um, what we're going to do is it's going to be about police brutality, you know, how, you know, I feel about it and my guests feel about it. But um, we're going to do something new. Um, from this point on, when I do the Breaking Bread episodes, I'm going to have them on YouTube first, and then I'm going to share them to Facebook because a lot of people have been inboxing me, saying to me, like, you know, hey, what if you want to see your previous Breaking Bread episodes? How can we do that? Like, do we have to go on your page and scroll and scroll and scroll? You should make a YouTube page for it. So then I thought about it and said that was a good idea. So this video right here is going to be on, on YouTube. And then once we finish doing this video, I'm going to share it to Facebook. And all of my previous Breaking Bread episodes are going to be on that YouTube page that I just recently made. So you can check it out. But um, I have a special guest. Y'all know who he is already, but you know, I'm going to introduce himself. He's been on the very first Breaking Bread episode and been on plenty of other Breaking Bread episodes. So, you know, introduce yourself. Well, you already know it's Breezy, man. Take it easy. You already know what you got to do. Be safe with this COVID-19 going on. And mm -hmm. we got our masks on, you know, doing a little distance yeah. thing. So. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Everybody be safe out there and do what you got to do. Okay, so um, like I said, this episode is going to be on police brutality, so I'm going to let you go. How do you, on a personal standpoint, feel like the way the world is going with the police brutality going on? I mean, first of all, at the end of the day, police brutality, first of all, brutality, you know what I mean? You're brutalizing people you're supposed to be protecting. You're supposed to be the long arm of the law. They're not the, you, you know what I'm saying? They use that gun for power. They use that shield as power. And you're praying on the weak. But when the strong come your way, the first thing you want to do is shoot. It's not right in no form or fashion. You know what I'm saying? You you basically are like, y'all the original gangsters. Y'all the gangsters. Y'all the mob to me. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing, and handling the things that you need to do to take care of what needs to be done at that certain point in time, you're doing otherwise. So, and that is mind over matter. So if you don't mind it, then what you're doing, you think it doesn't matter, but it does. We are civil people, and y'all acted is so very hostile in which way that you don't even need to do it. All because you have that badge. You have that gun on your waist. Now, you the same person without that badge and without that gun, then what happens? Would you be that same way? I think not. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people who became cops was bullied, beat down. There was never nothing. You know what I'm saying? And they felt like they needed to stand for something or have this type of, this type of confidence to make them feel like even if they do the wrong thing, it's still being right. So it's injustice. You know I mean, and, and I'm not, you feel, you know what I'm saying? You feel on different types of matters and different terms in which that you don't even need to stand or act that with a, with a civilian. But you're doing, again, the most. You're doing the most. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm watching right. too many flicks. Y'all killing too many people. Before, it was us killing us. Now it was you killing us. And you're supposed to be the protectors. Uh, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. No. Well, you know, I forgot to mention, this is all opinionated, so people, please don't get in your feelings and, and, and think we trying to say something. This is just how this black man feels, and I agree with him 100% on what he's saying. But, you know, like I said, it's opinionated, but in my personal opinion, I agree with him. At the end of the day, you know, Growing up where we, we came from, like, all, all we seen was police brutality. You feel what I'm saying? All we have been victims of police brutality, and we've seen it with our own eyes. So it's like, you know, it's kind of hard for us to understand and comprehend why all these things are happening. You know what I'm saying? When, I mean, you do have, you know, black-on-black -black crime, I get that. But, you know, majority of the time, it's the police harming us. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, 
when we try to defend ourselves or do anything to defend ourselves, we can't because we're scared. Because if you have a cop beating on you or smacking you or punching you, he stops and gives you a chance to breathe. Part of you in your head is thinking, damn, should I get up and defend myself or should I just cow and play, play the dead? You know what I'm saying? And like, it shouldn't be that way. And that's very sad. You know, that's why it's all these riots and all these protests are going on because it's like, what, what else can we do? You feel what I'm saying? It's like having a dog in a cage for all of his life. But then when you finally open that cage, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to run around. He's going to run rampant, jump around, jump on your furniture, tear this up, tear that up because he was confined to a cage. And that's how us as a people feel because we cannot physically retaliate to the police. So we riot. Because that's the only thing that we can do to possibly get away with. Because we can't defend ourselves against the police or against brutality, period. Because if we try to, what's going to happen? You know what I'm saying? Point blank, period. I got more to speak on that, but I actually was um, studying these three cases, you know, that really appealed to me. You know, that I just wanted to speak about. The first one I want to speak about is the Ahmaud Aubrey case. Um, situation. If you're not you know, familiar with who Ahmad Aubrey is, he was the jogger in Jersey, um, Georgia, excuse me, that got killed. He was um, jogging in Georgia. He was 25 years old. You know, his killers were Greg and Travis McMichael, both of whom were white. <laughs> Koinky Dinkle. <laughs> um, they, he said, Greg McMichael said he was staked Aubrey for a suspect in a chain of house breakings as an excuse to why he did what he did, right? Well, basically, um, Ahmaud Aubrey was chased down because it was actually a viral video going on that actually showed what actually happened. But um, Ahmaud Aubrey was chased down and he was shot two to three times with a shotgun. Two to the chest and one with a graze on his wrist, okay? Um... What's his name? Greg McMichael said that the jogger, Amon Aubrey, attacked his son, Travis McMichael, due to the reason why he was shot. Okay? Before I go any further, how do you feel about that? Well, basically, what you were doing is racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. So you right. was definitely seeing somebody who was black running somewhere, and you thought otherwise. Mm -hmm. You thought that it was something which it wasn't. Somebody was just trying to be fit and doing what they need to do to be healthy, you know what I mean? But you know what you did? Oh, black guy, five. The first thing you do was to shoot. You ain't ask no questions. You ain't say what you're doing here. What's going on? Are you okay? Is everything okay? Is everything all right? You didn't do that. The first thing you thought was, oh, nobody around? I don't even like that. Wow. And you let it go. There you go. So now you just took somebody, look, you playing God. Mm -hmm. And this is what we also do with people. See? This is you playing with you playing with a thin line. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a thin line. And y'all sit up there and y'all trying to put a, apply more pressure on that thin line. What happened when that shit breaks? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? For every for every action is a reaction. Your actions? No. Not with it. Not. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you, you're supposed to be there to protect. Protect. Not project negativity and take somebody like, who called you God? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was your first name. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you was the higher. Yeah. Or you, you was the one who brought life into my body. But you were able to take it from me. You see what I'm saying? It's all about power. You're power hungry. When you get that certain power, you feel like you could do anything at any given that, time that to privilege. anybody. That privilege, yeah. So you feel like you, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like a drug. Because you feel like that power, you could scare people, you could hurt people, and tell them, you know what I mean? You could just, and y'all have done it time and time again. This is only the start of what's about to really go down. Right. 
This has been years. This has been years. What you thought was gonna happen? He knocked on devil door. You mean tell me you don't think nobody's gonna answer? Be careful what you whisper. I agree. Because I personally feel like, you know, what Greg McMichael was saying is bullshit. That on the video, you can clearly see there was a struggle. The son, Travis McMichael, had the shotgun on Ahmaud Aubrey, and he was trying to grab the barrel of the shotgun to tussle, to move it away so he wouldn't get shot. I mean, anybody would do that. I, I know if, I don't know what I'm saying, if I have somebody with a shotgun pointed at me, at my chest, I'm just not just going to stand there and just be like, hey, you know, do what you want. Of course, I'm going to grab the gun. I'm going to tussle with you, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, make sure you don't shoot me. So I feel the theory of Travis McMichael is being attacked with bullshit because let me explain something to you. You cannot conceal a shotgun. The shit is in your fucking hand. Period. So it's like, who the fuck in their right mind is going to attack somebody with a shotgun in their hand? Think about it. You know what I'm saying? That's complete bullshit. But I'm going to go a little further. Okay? In the months after Aubrey's death, two DAs recused themselves from the case due to conflicts of interest. So that basically shows you, I'm gonna tell you where the conflicts of interest came into play with the whole situation. Because Greg McMichael was a former police officer. So you're telling me because you personally know somebody, you're gonna recuse it yourself from the situation versus making that person pay? So basically it's like you knew in your head, okay, this is my boy, I can't do that to him. Which I understand in a certain concept, but it's just crazy to me. You have a job to uphold by. You understand what I'm saying? And you have to uphold by that job 100%. Whether if it's your father, your brother, your sister, anybody. Okay? If you have a job to be a district attorney to convict or attempt to convict murderers, rapists, or whatever it is, you have to do your job. Period. So I feel personally that was bullshit. Okay? And also, this happened on February 23rd, right? The father and son that killed him didn't get convicted, didn't get charged with murder until May 7th. So you're telling me all of that time went by and y'all didn't know who actually did it. Okay? The people in Georgia in that area knew who did it knew what was going on, but knew that person was probably a pillar of the community, quote-unquote, and didn't want to snitch. Which I understand and which I get, but still, though, doesn't make it right at all. Woo! Okay? And, uh, let's see. Okay, and also, remember previously, I told you before that Greg McMichael said that he that Aubrey matched a description of a guy in a chain of break-ins. Reporters also discovered that there was only one break-in in the area since 2020 started. So, in my opinion, we all know what it was. I'm pretty much sure you know what it was. It's a cover-up. Thank you. Know you. Know what I mean? It's a cover-up. Thank you. So you know how y'all do it. It's a dirty game that y'all play. Thank you. And 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 I'm not gonna say that to every last one of them because there's some of them that actually do their job mm -hmm. and they actually do want to protect people. They actually do want to go they go about the right route. But being that it's so dirty, it's no way you can't rub shoulders with somebody that's dirty. It's a dirty game that y'all playing. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is. Y'all got moles in that shit, you know that. Like, y'all got D, y'all got the D-A, y'all got... That's dirty. Yo, wow, that's dirty. You know what I'm saying? Why y'all so dirty? Y'all put gloves on to put more dirt? Look, like, come on. Y'all the same people who put work on us. Come on. We can have not to be clean. You could stop smiling for head like, oh, it's a, it's a black guy with a white girl? Oh, we're gonna like drugs on them. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna play some drugs on them. Get him out of here. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna grab a little bit of this. Oh, look what I found back here. Oh, we got a bust. 
We got a bust. No, no, stupid. You did that. You know what I'm saying? He was minding his business, doing his own thing with his shorty. And instead, you see a oh, black guy with a nice, pretty white girl? Oh, she should be with me. Look, yeah. I don't like that shit. Exactly. Wait, lock him up, lock him up, lock him up. Matter of fact, I'm going to entice him to make him see how thoughtful we'll push him and put him in a situation. To, to make him react. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This Thank is what I'm gonna do. Thank you. <laughs> yo, yo, like, it's like, yo, y'all took the best people away from us that can make things happen in a positive way. Instead, the King, Malcolm X. Instead, y'all no know shade so Lord. nobody can see. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. Come on, like, be honest with yourself. A lot of y'all need to take that badge off. A lot of y'all. A lot of y'all don't need no hammer. Because you don't even know what to do. But shoot. But shoot. Black people. <laughs> you shoot an axe. And then you you know what I want to see? It's when y'all shoot us, right? And you know we already dead, y'all still couples. You know the person ain't breathing? The person can't move. There's no life. You know what I mean? In that body. You put the cuffs on many anyway to make it look like the person alive just injured. No. Nope. Y'all did this time and time again. Enough is enough. Yeah. What happens when y'all start falling? <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Y'all gonna have everybody here, right? ESA, all that other, all that other shit. Y'all wildin'. So do what you need to do. That's right. What needs to be done. Don't do all that other shit because it's unnecessary. And what you're doing is unnecessary. And as a person, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you should throw the fuck up. This should make you sick. Because you know what you do? You cover up, and you cover up your partner's little bullshit, and then you go back and like, this is what happened. He rushed me. He rushed you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I use everything and every single reason just to use that hammer. Listen, man. Crazy. It's not right, man. And the thing is, I need to really be mindful of the fact that we we humans just like you. We breathe just like you. We got families just like you. You taking somebody else child away. You understand that? How would you feel if somebody took you? The next one, the next two we're gonna talk about is the hashtag I can't breathe. So hashtag I can't breathe. The first one we're going to talk about is Eric Garner. For some of you people that may not be familiar with Eric Garner, this was in Staten Island on July 17, 2014, where he was standing on the corner being accused of selling cigarettes. Now, let's just, let me repeat again, accused of selling cigarettes. Cigarettes. Let me say it for another time. Cigarettes. Okay. Cops tried to arrest him wrongfully, so he refused by basically saying, don't touch me. Get your hands off me. What am I doing? Why are you arresting me? I'm pretty sure you can ask these questions because I don't think that he's actually breaking the law by asking, what are you arresting me for? Right or wrong? Right. Okay. So then after, Officer Penn... Pentaglio, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, if I'm not, whatever. Pentaglio. Pentaglio, yes. Put Garner in a headlock to restrain him, okay? Put him in a headlock to restrain him. And that Ben, he was never supposed to use that headlock. That's supposed that is to illegal, be. that is illegal force. That was, that's Ben, Aliyabu, that's Ben going. Okay, that is illegal force. That's Ben going, and everybody's watching you do this. Okay. <laughs> He yelled 11 times. He yelled 11 times. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. breathe." 11 times until he lost consciousness and died on the scene. That video was actually viral too as well. The question that I have is, because if you watch the video, it's multiple cops around. Okay, I understand. No, I don't understand. 
Okay? You have six or seven cops around one person. You telling me two of you guys could have hold his legs, the other two could have hold his arms, throw the cuffs on him, pick him up, put him against the wall, talk to him. You guys telling me you couldn't do that. You're telling me that you had to put him in a chokehold to restrain him. I don't give a fuck if you are fucking 500 pounds, okay? You have seven to eight people on you at one time? You ain't getting them off. <laughs> you ain't getting them off. Especially when you hit the floor. Period. And in the video, you can see he was in a headlock while he was on the floor. Choking. 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 Gone, right? And the thing is, when you use a chokehold, you feel you cutting off. You know what I'm saying? The person cannot, you see how you swallow? The person cannot, this does not move. This stops completely right here. You cutting off all that air. And you're squeezing even more and more when he's saying, barely, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Hey, yo. <laughs> this is a real touchy subject because I've dealt with a couple of cops that they know who they are. You know what I mean? They know who they are. They know who I was. They know what they knew anything was me just walking to get some food. Just walking to get some food. Because it was late, 11 o'clock. I went to go get some food. And they pull up. Regular car, all black, black tents, everything. Pull up. Yo, what you doing? <laughs> yeah, what you doing? I said, you walking? What you doing? I turned around because y'all in regular clothes. I'm like, I keep it moving. Stop right there. And I heard, Ch -ch -ch. I stopped and turned around and had a non, no, oh, 38 special in my face. Yeah, Glock, nah, y'all got, got some shit. <laughs> I'm like, yo, wow. I said, what's about to happen now? Yo, you got anything on you? I'm like, yo, you stopping me from me walking to go get some food? You know what y'all did? Do me against the car, right? You know what your man did? As soon as y'all put the cuffs on me, he started talking crazy and choked me up. So now I'm hemmed up with cuffs in the back of me. Like, oh, word. <laughs> I'm bleeding because you know what he did? He kind of threw a punch while he was rapping me. So he kind of, like, kind of death and just rapping, rapping. Like, and I'm like, oh, you're so tough with the cuffs. Yeah, yeah, make beats. You see what I'm saying? Just like when I throw us in jail and that's not supposed to be in jail, people, that's not supposed to be in jail, y'all yeah, make beats. It's not right, man. No form of fashion. It's not right. And it's, it's time for us to stand up, to be honest. It's right and it's wrong. It's left and it's right. It's up and it's down. Exactly. Guess I, what? I, I agree 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100% because it's like at the end of the day, stuff like this shouldn't be happening. Period. Know. Whether you're a white person, black person, pink person, purple person, this shouldn't be happening. Period. And if it does happen, the people that caused it to happen need to be reprimanded. Whether you're the president of the United States or you are a local police officer in your neighborhood or a mayor or a governor, you should pay for what the fuck you do. But um, let me continue to read. So, December 3rd, 2014, Officer Pentaglio, whatever his name is, I'm sorry if I'm messing it up, was deemed innocent during his hearing for indictment. So basically, he gets charged then he goes over for indictment and he's deemed innocent when this guy killed somebody on camera crazy right let me continue to read on august 2nd of 2019 an administrative judge ruled that the officer should be terminated from his job but no further action was taken so basically what you're saying to me is just because he's an officer and he kills somebody, that's the only action that he has to get terminated from his job. That don't mean a motherfucking thing. Because he can go out and do that shit again and again and again and again because he has the chance to because he wasn't reprimanded. But there's no 
good ending to this story, but somewhat of an ending for his family, for um, Eric Garner's family. I believe they got um, $5.2 billion or something like that in the settlement. But that doesn't still bring Eric Garner back. That doesn't ease the pain. Yeah, you may be a millionaire, but, you know, a mother lost his son. You understand? Kids lost their parents. Uh, a sister lost their brother. A uh, nephew, uh, aunt and uncle lost their nephew. A cousin lost their cousin. This shit needs to stop. Okay? Now, last but not least, in the hashtag, I can't breathe. George Floyd. This right here really, really touched me because if you really look closely at the video, you can actually see George Floyd going into unconsciousness. Like, you can actually see the white in his eyes. The white in his eyes. When you see the white in somebody's eyes, yo. Their eyes roll back. When you see it. When you see it's white, something's wrong. But let me tell you the story of this. He died May 25th of 2020. In Minnesota, from having an officer put a knee on his neck. Okay, the officer was Derek Chavin, and had his knee on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes. Nine minutes. Let me repeat that again. Nine. Okay, nearly nine minutes. Sorry. Because they said it was seven. No, they said um altogether it was um nine minutes and. 53 something seconds. What is still in, right? Something like that. Two of those minutes, Floyd wasn't responsive. So that basically means for two of those minutes, while that officer had his knee on his neck, chances are he could have already been dead. You understand? Let me repeat that again. Officer Derek Shavin, if I'm saying the name wrong, I apologize had his knee on George Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes. Two of those, he was not responsive. Okay? Let me keep going. The, the officer said that Floyd was claimed to have used a fake $20 bill in a grocery store. Before I go any further. Wow. Wow. Thank there you go again. Another using another reason to kill another person for the wrong reason. First of all, who made you God? Let's go back to this. I'm sick and tired of seeing my people suffering for something that you didn't even know because you were scared or you wanted to make. I. Right, you know what happened with them cops? It was two cops, right? They both just lost their job. That's it. We murder somebody in the street, we go to jail for life, we ain't never seen them outside. And we might get the gas chamber, we might get the needle, you might, get a, you, might get a, you might hit the chair, bro. You know what I'm saying? You might hit the chair. She smile like pineapple. You know what I'm saying? Like you well. Um, I'm highly, highly pissed off about this whole thing because I watched too many of people get killed in front of my face. By police. People with their hands up. What's that? And just like they said, don't reach for your pocket. Or if you reach for your cell phone, they think it's a gun. No, you have a silver casing to your phone. It's a gun. And they let off 9 to 15 shots at you. <laughs> and then the cycle to put cuffs on you after you're dead. Yo, it's never right, man. And, and I'm not... I'm not gonna raise my child around some bullshit like this, man. It's like, yo, think about it. All y'all parents out there, hear this. Imagine your son or your daughter walking somewhere. Right? And a cop, and a cop pulls over and goes, Where you going? You know what I'm saying? You don't know his intention. Where you going? What are you doing? It's a policeman, right? You stop and you have to answer, you have to answer them. That's crazy. Before it wasn't even that. That's crazy how they made it. Now you have to answer them. Yeah. 
I'm not your child. Can you clap up like that? And not coming home. Well, you're supposed to have been from school. What's going on? You don't know what the fuck going on. A cop just killed your child. Want to know why? When they go, let me see if I can call my mommy and my daddy and pull their cell phone. And you got to clap. Cell phone. Shit is red. But it gets even better. It gets even better. So, this is what the cop said. This is like, was like, <laughs> funny to me. Very funny to me. This right here. Um, they said that he resisted to get out of the car prior to the, before the video was being shot. So basically what they're trying to say is when the person recorded the video was only when the officer had the knee on the neck. So basically what they're trying to say is in the course of him resisting, he landed on the floor. Thus far was when the cop put the knee on his neck. That right there is complete bullshit. Because I'm pretty much sure, okay, maybe it's a, a truth to that. Let's just, you know, be hypothetical and say it is a truth to that. Where is that video at? I'm pretty much sure somebody else started recording before the knee was on the neck. So if what you're saying is true, why isn't there a other video out there of showing the actual beginning of the whole situation. So that's why I feel until we see that video, it's bullshit, okay? You put him on the floor, okay? You put your knee on his neck. That's just how I feel. And then also, he was suspected of using a fake $20 bill. Yo, <laughs> I'm telling you right, I'm telling you right now. Excuse me. Okay, that is one of the biggest fucking excuses in the world for police to use force. So you're telling me all of that force was needed because of a fake $20 bill. The only reason why I'm saying this is because of another friend of mine that I grew up with was accused of stealing a slice of fucking pizza and got the shit beat out of him in a fucking bodega. Accused of stealing a slice of pizza. You got all of this crime going on in the world that you want to bother minorities for a slice of fucking pizza and a fake $20 bill? That's complete bullshit. You're using excuses to use your badge, to use your gun, to use your force because you know you can get away with it. So it's fucking bullshit. Okay? Uh, let's see. Where am I at? Oh, okay. So basically what they're saying is that... George Floyd put himself on the floor. Okay, so let's just say if George Floyd willingly put himself on the floor, why didn't you just cuff him and call it a day? If he willingly put himself on the floor, all you had to do was cuff him. Clink, 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 clink. He can't do nothing. He can't do nothing. That's a That's and then question. also, police carry, I believe, four things. A baton, a knife, a stun gun, and a real gun. Let's just say, hypothetically, you put the cuffs on him and he tries to get up and run. Stun gun him. You gotta go to ER, get them hooks out. And, and that's it. And he going in. And that's it. But um, this is where it also gets crazy, where it kind of like pissed me off. Or also, I want to say, the officer was charged with third degree murder and second degree manslaughter, but let's just be real. Do you know third degree murder is one of the lowest that you can get for murder? The lowest. I believe it's first, second, and third, and fourth, and that's it. So basically, he got one of the lowest grades of murder. Let's just say that. And he also got second degree manslaughter. Manslaughter is 15 years. You can get out in six or seven, or possibly five. And he got second degree. Think about it, people. Also, they said that George Floyd had a wide range of diseases that stem from coronary heart disease and hypertensive heart disease. 
and also had potential intoxicants in his system that could likely be the cause of his death. Are you fucking serious? So you're telling me the knee being on also, he did the same thing. He yelled nine times. I can't breathe. <laughs> okay. So basically what you're telling me is the knee on the neck didn't cause his death. That's fucking crazy. But after that, um, the FBI is conducting a civil rights investigation and no further action is being taken at the moment. Complete bullshit. Complete bullshit. Complete motherfucking bullshit. Okay? The knee on his neck was what caused his fucking death. But <laughs> it's being fucking covered up because he has a fucking badge. I do not understand that. Okay, but one thing you need to understand is this is why all the riots are going on right now. Because you know why? We can physically beat you. Because you know why? We have felonies or for trumped up fucking charges. Some states we live in doesn't allow us to carry a gun. So we can't beat you. So what do you think the other alternative is to do? But one thing I don't agree with is taking it out on your community, robbing stores. That I don't agree with. Go to a police station. Throw cocktail bombs or whatever. Shit like that if you want to riot. I don't believe in that either, but it's like people of color don't have no protection. Period. Period. We don't have no protection. So you have to understand why we are rioting because we are tired of the bullshit. Tired of the brutality. Tired of getting pulled over for no fucking reason. Tired of getting beaten up. Tired of having things planned on us. We tired of this shit. And like I said, I am not a racist at all. Point blank period. But when it comes down to minorities getting help, nobody's around. You see all of these cops posting these videos or how they agree with racism and, and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But nine times out of ten, I guarantee you if there was a person in their police department or in their unit doing that shit, they ain't going to say a motherfucking word. So to me, those videos are complete bullshit. Because if you really were for us and if you really didn't like what those cops are doing, you would do more than a video. Because you have the power to do so because... You have that badge. So, no disrespect to those cops making those videos about how they're against racism, but that don't mean shit. That don't mean shit to us because we're the ones going through it. We're the ones losing our kids, okay? Our cousins, our brothers, our nephews, nieces. We, we're the ones losing them when you're not. We're the ones going to funerals crying over our dead camarades' grave while you guys are, are, are fucking living your life. So to me, that's complete bullshit. And once again, like I said, this is opinionated. This is just my personal opinion about the whole situation. So please, I'm not taking no direct shots at anybody at all, but it's just how I personally feel. We're fed the fuck up of the bullshit. That's it. Pretty much. Is there anything to say? On that whole note is exactly what he was saying. I'm going to implement this. With every situation that you put yourself into, in which where you need the law, like he said, they not there. Nope. So, and I know y'all can't be, let me, I'm mindful of the fact y'all can't be all over everything at once. You're getting calls of abuse over here, you're getting calls of somebody who just kicked in somebody's door over here with him, you know what I mean? You get in my call, I'll give you that. Those who do their job, you got my blessings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got my blessings. I, I, I read I read through a few. I read it to a, a very, <laughs> oh, I did too. very few of them. You know I mean? actually really did their job. I did. So and I appreciate I'll give you that. I give you that. I appreciate Kudos. You. And you also saved my nieces from certain shit. You saved a couple of those situations that was about to get real ugly. And you it turned out to be a good day. After everything was clear, after the smoke was clear. But the fact of the matter is, yeah, I really think 
that child was not old, was was about to come through? You really think so? Alright, we got this virus going on. And then pay attention. I'm going to say this. Everybody get in touch with yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Really get in touch with yourself. Because this right here, this thought, it's going to be eye opening. And I'm just saying that over the way. People get tired of too much fuckery. Excuse my, nah, I'm grown. Too much fuckery. You keep, you keep doing that fuck shit. You think ain't no fuck shit going to happen to you? That's a fact. You sure? That's a fact. <laughs> like, I agree 100% with that. But, oh, my bad. Nah, I'm, I'm all for that. No, I, I'm just going to leave it like that because right. I might incriminate myself if I keep nah, talking. I feel, I feel <laughs> but, um, I will say this. We, as minorities, already have to worry about black on black crime, black on Spanish crime, Spanish on Spanish crime, Spanish on black crime. Okay? We don't need you guys killing us too. Because at the end of the day, remember, you guys started this. We did it. So, you got to understand where we're coming from in that aspect. But, like I said, this is not, you know, a personal shot towards anybody at all. Okay, let me say that again. This is just a personal, opinionated thing because I love all people. And to me, in my eyes, all people are equal. But I am one of the very few that thinks that way. But that's just how I feel. And also, what I'm going to say is, if you live in a Commonwealth state, and you don't have no felonies, no nothing, and you're a minority, don't... Ex Exercise, what? You yeah. You must, no, 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 no. What you mean? I can say that. I can't. I'm not saying that wrong. This is common rope state. Okay. Exercise your right to bear arms. And when I sit up here and say bear arms, okay, if you have a house or whatever to protect your house, do what you got to do. I'm not talking about running around, you know what I'm saying, fucking busting shots in the air, mm, trying to go. rob niggas. There you go. There you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. I'm saying be if you are a responsible and mature adult and you feel like you can be in possession of a handgun without doing no dumb shit, I encourage you to get one. Because you know what? They got them. So why can't we? Anything to say about Live Off? And then notice, like I said, and I'm gonna leave it like this. RIP to those who fell to this corona joint. Yes. I feel right. y'all pain. I feel y'all pain. I understand. It changes a lot of people. What's going on right now? People can't find jobs right now. There's um very is a very slim chance of how things are moving right now. And to be in a positive way, I understand. Some people are uh, changing their religion and everything, going through this right now and everything. Um, I'm just gonna be mindful of the fact of. Even if I don't know you, I know you because we human. And I just I deal with that person like whoever, whoever. And I'm saying I'm just saying like you, if you need to reach out to certain people and talk to them, this is the time to talk to them. If anything that you had in the background, hide in the back of your head, or a type of feeling or a type of way, you may want to voice that because. I'm going to be positive. I don't want to say what I know, but I just want to be honest. Get everything in your clearance. You know what I mean? Clear everything out. Hear everything out. The best soul is a pure soul. You know what I'm saying? Purify all that. Get all that waste away from all that. Everything that's toxic to you, you might just want to switch that like real fast. That even has to do with me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm speaking as a man, I'm being honest. Yo, sorry for your past ones, and I understand it's hard, and it hurts crazy, and I know that hurt all too well, all too well. But it's something we have to get over, adapt with, and move on. We've done this, we will do this again, you know what I'm saying? This is only a, it's a matter of time. It's patience. Sometimes you gotta pump your brakes so you can see what's in front of you. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> we run that red light. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Just remember, I believe in this. I'm pretty much sure he does too. You know, we are all equal. Period. Right. There's only one race, and that's a human race. And we're all humans. Right. Whether you white, black, purple, or pink, we are all equal. It's just society made us believe we were divided. Exactly. You understand? So let's spark that change and make it different. Because at the end of the day, we all bleed red. When you cut somebody, we bleed the same blood. It's not like you cut a white person and they bleed pink blood or you... You cut a black person, they bleed purple blood. It's all red. We all have the same thing coursing through the veins of our body. So let's cut the bullshit out, man. For real. But this is episode 13 of Breaking Bread. It's your boy, Most One in Here. I appreciate you taking the time for tuning in and watching it. You know, I'm off this. You want to say your last regards? Yo, be safe, be true, and know what you know just... Pray, you know what I mean? Pray. We are gonna get through this. Everybody stick together the way you need to. Pray. Solid up, you heard? Mind up and solid up. There you go. Easy. <laughs>